Hey, welcome back. <laughs> this is a weird one. Uh, so, I've been spending time trying to finish up the last two movies of 1971, but we're still not there. So I went back to 1972, and I picked another sequel from a movie that we've already talked about. So Ben is a sequel to the movie Willard, which came out in 1971, was released by Cinerama, who also did Ben. They also did The House That Dripped Blood and uh, Mumsy Nanny, Sunny and Girly. So Willard, if you watched that video that I did on Willard, Willard is pretty interesting. It's all about a guy in his 20s who has a rough life, very frustrating, ends up befriending a bunch of rats and is able to control them and uses them to kill someone that has given him a lot of grief. Ben starts exactly where Willard leaves off. In fact, like the last scene of Willard is the first scene of Ben. They like show it to you again. Uh, so if you haven't seen Willard, just go, go watch it now because it's good. Okay. Then you can watch my video on Willard and then come back to this. Uh, ben has a very different vibe from Willard. So at the end of Willard, Willard is, he tries to rid himself of the rats that he used to kill someone and then they end up killing him. And Ben is very different. Uh, ben is the name of the main rat. Um, Willard, at the like last 20 minutes, the supernatural element appears in Willard, uh, shows up, and then it carries through Ben. Uh, ben, in this second movie, controls all these rats, of which they used 4,000 live rats. Apparently in Willard, they used 500 rats. And in Ben, they used 4,000 trained rats. Um, half of the movie is like the police, the the... I guess of Los Angeles, but the police of the area is filmed in LA trying to find and kill all these rats. And the other part of the movie is that there's a little boy who has a heart condition and has had heart surgery because at one point he opens up his shirt and shows like the heart surgery scar. And I guess he has no friends. It's not really... I mean, we're supposed to believe he has no friends, but the whole movie takes place over the course of a couple days. He never goes to school or anything. Uh, there's one there's one inst incident where someone is bullying him and then the rats protect him by biting the kid in the legs. Um, also, early in the movie... I think it's a police officer. Someone like goes and like finds the rats and the rats kill him. So you get a rat kill right at the beginning. Whereas with Willard, you don't have any rats killing anyone until the last 20 minutes of the movie. So someone gets killed. Well, like Willard gets killed in the beginning of the movie. And then I think it's a police officer gets killed. And then a guy driving a truck gets attacked, but not killed. So you have a lot of rat attacks right in the beginning. The whole movie is... It's darker visually. Uh, a lot of the scenes are not well lit. A lot of the scenes take place at night or in the sewer, uh, which that doesn't happen in Willard at all. Like, none of that. Um, but I will point out that in the night scenes, it's actually night. A lot of movies in the 60s and even, even in 70, and I think in 71, uh, when it was a night scene... They would film it during the day and then put like a filter on so that it like looked darker, but it was fully lit, which kind of looks stupid because you can like see clouds and stuff on some of these movies. So, you know, it's daytime, but at least you can see everything, which I guess is good. I don't know which one I like better, but in this one, it's nighttime a lot and you can tell that they've just set up a spotlight. So that you can like see the actor, but the shadows are like extreme. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't. The movie doesn't look great because of that. Uh, also, the kid follows Ben into sewers, 
And uh, there's a lot of sewer scenes, which is interesting to me. It makes me think about when I was young and I would watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and I used to think that like the sewers are some cool place to like go like underground tunnels and stuff like that because they don't really explain to you in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that the sewers are full of human excrement and probably smell so bad that you wouldn't want to go down there. Uh, in this movie, they also somewhat glorify the sewers I don't know, at least, maybe it's just because you can't smell the movie, but they don't, like, show that there's, like, poop down there. They just make it look like dirty water, and it's all, like, made of brick and stuff. Like, I've never been in a sewer, but it looks kind of cool when he goes down in the sewer. He crawls around, I mean, he crawls around, and there's mucky water, and there's, like, like leaves that are down there and stuff and there's rats everywhere but the kid is just like crawling through these tunnels and it looks kind of fun but in reality he's like crawling through human feces uh later he's like kind of stuck down there and his sister goes to get him and she's wearing like a skirt she falls in the water and she's got like brown all over her like that's poop that's really disgusting actually but they don't ever tell you that that's what it is and when they fall when she falls in it she just has a reaction like she's gotten wet. Anyway, another weird aspect of this movie, like really weird, definitely the weirdest aspect, is that it's kind of a musical. The first one was not like that, but the little kid in this movie sings at least three songs, and in another scene he plays the harmonica, and there might even be another musical scene. So there's at least four musical scenes, and he sings uh, two the rat, he sings a song called Ben, which in reality was performed by Michael Jackson when Michael Jackson was 14 years old. And I guess the song was so big that it won a Golden Globe and was nominated for an Oscar, but didn't win. And then after that, Michael Jackson put out an album, and he called it Ben. It's about killer rats. Like, <laughs> maybe maybe this is less weird in 1972, and the sewer thing too, I don't know. But when we today think of Michael Jackson, we do not associate him with horror films or rats or anything like that. And it's weird because this is like young teenager Michael Jackson doing a horror theme song and naming his entire album after it and it gets nominated for multiple awards and wins one this is pretty interesting because just a year previous in 1970 there were virtually zero mainstream horror films the coming out of America the only one was House of Dark Shadows. That was the only mainstream horror film of coming out of America in all of 1970. And there were some British ones too. The Hammer films are mainstream for sure. Now, in 1971, we don't have a lot more, but there are some. There was Let's Scare Jessica to Death. And there were more Hammer films. Um, but there were others too. And uh, including Willard which came out on Cinerama. Now we have 1972, and there's some breakthroughs in 1972. Um, I got to look up the timeline because I'm not going in order right now because I'm doing sequels, but 1972 is the year that Last House on the Left came out, which was not a mainstream release, but it got huge. So after this, you know, we're only one year away from The Exorcist here, and then after that, everything opens up. Like, totally. But anyway, this is before The Exorcist. And it's got uh, an Oscar nomination and a Golden Globe win. Um, pretty interesting. Also, like, there's a lot of rats in this movie. And it's pretty gross. There's rats all over people. Um, not for the squeamish. Uh, there's not really any gore. There's basically not any blood, even. But... It's 
it's hard to watch if you don't like rats. Like, I don't mind them that much. But then there's, they're also like rats, like running through the sewer. And there's a part where the kid kisses Ben and he's all like wet with sewer water. And he kisses him. That's really gross. If you think about it, it's gross. Um, yeah. So overall, I give this uh, six out of 10. I gave Willard an eight if for some reason you're watching this and didn't watch that video. Willard is really good. I actually re-watched it this week so that I could have it fresh in my mind for Ben. In Willard, the acting is good. There's a there's a good cast full containing well-known actors. The lighting is good. The story is good. You feel for the characters. Even the characters, like you feel for Willard, who is so frustrated. And uh, Ernest Borgnine plays his boss, who's a total jerk, like major, major jerk in that movie. And there's just like all these interesting characters in Willard that like put all different kinds of pressure on the main character. And in this one, you, I, you know, I find the kid to be semi-annoying, um, although critics of 1972 thought he was amazing, which is interesting to me. I thought he was kind of annoying. The songs don't fit at all. I don't know why they put the kid singing three songs in this movie. And you, you have like three different vibes. You have like the killer rat vibe. And then you have the like singing kid vibe who like befriends the rat. And it's like kind of wholesome. And then you have the like cop thing. And the last like 20 or 25 minutes of this movie is like, I don't know how much money they spent on this, but they had like, all these emergency vehicles, like fire trucks, like construction t trucks. They have flamethrowers in it, fire hoses, um, like f shotguns, which I assume are shooting fake shells or whatever, blanks. And they send all these people down once they discover where the rats are hiding out. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know if they're fake flamethrowers or if it was like imposed like visually imposed optically later i don't know how it looks very unsafe it looks real the only thing that doesn't look real is when they f like flame the rats you can tell the rats are like superimposed or maybe animated i think i think they i think they superimposed the rats so like they're obviously not being burned for real but they have the flames going over the rats and the rats just like running away from them but anyway there's flamethrowers, real fire hoses for sure, cops shooting shotguns at these rats. At, there's one split second where you see like all these rats get blown away by a shotgun, which I assume was fake. I mean, obviously they didn't kill real rats in the movie, but and then again, I'm thinking they've got 4,000 train rats, like probably some of them died. You know, I, I mean, I don't know, but I, um, actually I watched this on Peacock and it wouldn't let, I could not figure out a way to watch the full credits because it just like went to the next movie and I couldn't stop it. Um, but I assume that they didn't, you know, when you see movies like this, it always says like no animals were harmed in the filming or whatever, but I can't imagine that no animals were harmed in this filming. They have 4,000 rats going through the sewers and there's water and stuff. And like, I don't think rats swim very well. I don't know. I got to look into that, but, uh, there's a lot going on with the sewer and the rats, and the, I, it must have cost a lot of money. I don't even know how much money does it cost to obtain and train 4,000 rats. And then they have all this equipment and everything. And then, like, it was kind of, like, thrown in at the end. And then I was like, okay, they must have, like, saved a lot of the budget for this. And then it goes on for, like, 20 minutes where they're down there flaming the rats. And the kid and his sister are down there trying not to get flamed. I don't know. It's just, like, all thrown, slapped together at the end. Definitely not a worthy sequel of the great movie that is Willard, but it was all right. It was interesting. I mean, I am impressed whenever I see live animals running around in a movie. So six out of 10 for Ben. The Michael Jackson angle is very odd to me. I still like now I hear the song. Actually, if you listen to the song, it's like an acoustic guitar and a bass and like nice Michael Jackson singing or whatever. And but, like, at the very beginning, they put this, like, horror synth, but, like, twice. And then and then you don't hear that anymore in the song. It's like, meow. Like, you know, like, as if it was I Drink Your Blood or something. Like, this weird synth. All right, anyway, that's enough for Ben. 
Um, they did remake Willard in 2003. I think I might watch that at some point. And Crispin Glover, who sings, actually sings the song from Ben in the remake of Willard, which is interesting. Also, the author of Rat, the Ratman Notebooks, which is what Willard was based on, based on, didn't have anything to do with this movie. He, he wrote the story that Willard was based on, and then the guy who wrote the screenplay for Willard just wrote the screenplay for this. I don't think he consulted with the original author. All right, that's enough for Ben. Uh, we'll see you next time.